My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. If you want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. I keep telling you in this market, good news is bad news. And sometimes bad news is also just plain bad news. And that's how you get a day like today where the Dow plummets 349 points. I believe one point is much uglier. S&P plunges 1.45%. And the Nasdaq knows dies 2.18% on strong economic data. Because strong data means the Fed will need to keep tightening and maybe tightening aggressively. On top of that, we got a very, very problematic earnings report from Micron, the big commodity chip maker with far-reaching markets. And that is just plain negative, too. Remember what's supposed to happen here. Let's step back. What do we want? We have America's largest service economy, right? That's what we're not manufacturing. We're a service economy. And we're a spending economy. The Fed wants to slow that spending down. But when it sees we had 3.2% GDP growth last quarter, that was revised up from 2.9%. That was this morning. And we get fewer than expected jobless claims again this morning. It shows that j Powell's war on inflation has still got much longer way to go than we thought. People aren't spending less. They're spending more. Mortgage rates are actually going lower, too. That's not supposed to happen when the Fed wants them higher, at least to slow down the purchase of housing. And that's why all this seemingly good news for the economy just turned out to be plain bad for the market. But when it comes to individual companies, bad news, well, it's just plain the house of pain. bad news, which brings me to Micron, the chip maker that reported it a very, uh, uh, okay, it was an awful number. They also made it clear that 2023 will be ugly, too, next year already, because things are as bad as they were now. I bet they have to go back to 2008 to see how bad. You never want to hear a comparison to 2008. Now, th- this is a really important company. Micron's chips are used in cell phones, computers, data centers. All three end markets are as weak as they've been in ages, even the third data centers. Because we've got too many PCs, too many phones, and now too many data warehouses for the cloud. The demand just isn't as great as these companies thought, in part because in the case of data centers, which have been a booming market, a lot of the problems are in gaming and advertising weakness. The customers just don't need more space. This wouldn't be so bad, except that technology is so huge. A lot of people don't understand the way the stock market works. It's a breakdown of how much in the S&P a sector is. And right now, 26% of the S&P 500 is in tech. A decade ago, it was only 19%. Back in 1995, it was less than 10%. These days, tech's huge with gigantic market companies that really do control this market in a lot of ways. Even after an awful year for the sector, this sector's still too big. So when a good company like Micron tells us that every key area is weaker than we expected, it reverberates throughout the whole market. Just because the issue isn't Micron. A lot of the problems they have are its competitor Samsung from Korea selling below market prices, really wrecking any near-term hope for a comeback. But even if this hideous quarter from Micron would be something we could handle if the Fed were winning its war on inflation, at that point, that point, what would happen is the Fed would take the break off the, uh, the, the, well, they would stop trying to slow the darn thing down. And maybe they would even tap the accelerator, breathe new life in the economy. See, we actually wanted to go f- so far as to slow it and then make it go faster. We're not there yet at all. Yes, the Fed's making the least, least progress on this front. And the one it's most worried about, that it's not doing well at all, is wage inflation. They want to soften up the labor market, and it's just not happening. Not at all. Not at all. And you're going to hear it later from paychecks when we talk. It's very rare that there are places where where wages are being held back. Last night, I told you the market could roar as long as we had no central bank-related news and we got good earnings from quarters from companies like Nike and FedEx. But if we have to worry about the Fed and we're getting bad earnings, well, that's a very different story. This morning, my friend David Tepper, a great manager, Great money manager came on Squawk Box where he pointed out that inflation is not under control, which means the Fed's not done and neither are the rest of the world's central banks. 
Last week, Christine Lagarde, the head of the European Central Bank, and a very smart person, told us she might have to do at least 350 basis point rate hikes if things don't cool down. The Bank of Japan just indicated that it might have to tighten, too. The Bank of Japan! All these central banks, a lot, they own a lot of bonds. They could dump their bonds. That's going to push up interest rates. Every time you see hot economic data, like the revised GDP number or the strong jobless claims, it's obvious that the Fed will have to keep bringing... The House of Pain. ...along with its compadres and the rest of the world. Now, I try not to be too binary in my thinking, because this is a weird moment for the economy. But Wall Street's perspective is very clear. The bull scenario is that employment gets weaker, spending declines, and corporate earnings don't get hurt too hard. The bear case is that employment stays strong, spending stays strong, and the earnings still get hurt. Again, that's, uh, that's from the perspective of the stock market. If you don't own stocks, the bear case might be better for you. Today, David Tepper laid out the bear case. And, you know, by the way, he's genuinely a very smart non-perma bear. He's someone who's always looking for opportunities. But right now, he doesn't see them. So he's leaning short. That's a term he used. That does not mean he wants the market to go down or he expects to go down big. It's just that he just doesn't see as many opportunities to make money on the long side. Believe me, if Tepper started seeing mass firings and lower prices, including stock prices, he would turn bullish on a heartbeat. But neither the markets nor the economy are cooperating right now. And he would like to see interest rates come, come down because of a slowing economy not because of a short-term blip. All day I heard people say that Tepper caused the sell-off, like he's the Grinch who stole Christmas. But he simply stated the facts on a morning where the data was very bearish. Jobs are strong, wages are strong, and the economy is strong. But earnings in the larger sector of the stock market, tech, <laughs> awful. Hey, by the way, at the same time, electric vehicles, uh, that other engine of hope, they're stalling out, as even the same to Tesla is finally offering discounts. In the past, Tesla didn't even need to advertise, let alone cut prices. For Wall Street, it's an unholy situation to see the great retail stock that is Tesla wither on the vine. What gets the market back on track? First, we need to see data that confirms weakness in the economy, real weakness, lower GDP numbers, larger jobless loss, loss claims, and yes, sadly, mass layoffs, and especially in technology, which is way overbuilt and way too bloated. A big part of the problem here is that so many tech outfits don't seem to understand the business cycle. Old-fashioned industrial companies, boy, do they ever know to hunker down. I mean, they know how to really quickly ahead of a recession. Because they've seen the movie before. Retailers get forcibly hunkered down through layoffs and store closures. But for the most part, we're a service economy, which includes a monster amount of tech that's fueled by advertising and consumer spending. Many of these companies are clueless when it comes to firing people. They've never been disrupted before. They were the disruptors, for heaven's sake. Now suddenly their customers don't need them as much, and they don't know what to do. We on this show want a soft landing, but the Fed can't give us one unless the economy gets weaker. The pilot can't land the plane on the tarmac safely if the Fed can't stop the engines on time. And that's what happened today. Now, a word about this fellow David Tepper. If the economy were running colder and the stock market were lower and interest rates were higher but then headed lower, things would be different. Today, we didn't see that, though. We had the worst of three worlds, hot economic data, weak corporate data, earnings, and an honest broker calling out that things are going the wrong way for the stock market and for bonds worldwide. If we do get mass layoffs, they can crush wage inflation, which is the real issue, not commodity, but wage inflation. That's a different story. But today, we got some extremely low jobless claims, which means wage inflation is out of control. Of course, if you remember, market historian Larry Williams tell, says that today and tomorrow are the best times to buy stocks ahead of the Santa Claus rally that tends to hit almost every year. Last night, I thought maybe that rally came early. But after today, that's truly not the case. While we could still get that seasonal bounce, obviously, the market's got to been tougher to gain. In the end, I don't know about Santa. The truth is, we're already beating inflation, aside from wage inflation. I worry, though, that that's not good enough for the Fed, though. They probably won't stop until we have a lot more unemployment, and apparently that might take much longer than we thought. So let me give you the bottom line. Do not shoot the messenger. David Tepper didn't need to steal Christmas. It wouldn't take it from the bulls. It was the data that did. 
and the central banks that don't seem to know how to finish their job. Let's go to Jake in Florida, please. Jake. Hey, Jim. Thanks for the call. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Jake. What's up? Hey, as the tech industry is adjusting, wondering if this stock could be a buy at its current price. The company is Dell Technologies. You know, this is a really interesting story because obviously the man behind Dell, Michael Dell, is one of the smartest people on earth. At the same time, it is a technology story. And tech is just not the place to be. I think you have a very inexpensive stock in your hands. Can you wait a year? If you can wait a year, year I think you're going to make very good money there. Let's go to Dan in South Carolina. Dan. Hey, Jim. Booyah. Booyah, Dan. What's going on? Um, the reason I'm giving you a call is that, uh, uh, you know, I, I am a club member, and I have been following yes. closely over the last couple of months. And uh, one day, I believe that you mentioned Walgreens Boots Alliance, not as a yes. focus, but you had mentioned it, in, you know, just in passing. And I was looking up some of the stocks that you were that you had were talking about uh, that were good good buys. And I, you know, when I pull it up, it, it shows me four or five other stocks that are in that in that grouping. And I looked and I saw Walgreens Boots Alliance. And um, I said, you know, this looks like something that's interesting. Um, they they pay a 4.8, 4.9% right. dividend. Yes. Um, and uh, they've been down a little bit as the rest of the market has. They're not a superstar earning stock, but, you know, with a good dividend, I think they're a solid company. And I think they the last are. four quarters, they beat well, but, uh, but earnings but for the last just, four quarters. Don't mean interrupt you, but, you know, they have a 5% yield. I did, yeah, I'm interested because they have Ross Brewers running it, and I remember her at Starbucks, how terrific she is. But the one thing I would say is that eight times earnings, retail not doing that well, and they've got to fix this problem where you can't get into the different categories because there's lock and key on everything. And my Walgreens has become impossible to go to, just impossible. I'd rather go to Amazon. I feel like it gets there faster. Let's go to Craig in Illinois, please. Craig. Hi, Jim. Love your show, by the way. My Thank question you. Is, my question is, do you think Walmart would buy Zest Echo Arc uh, to gain the patents on the Zest Fest product. Um, okay, uh, let me I, uh, let me just speak to Wal to Walmart itself. Uh, Walmart, very inexpensive stock. Uh, I've missed. I've I've had trouble calling this company uh, correctly because it's a 23 times earnings, but it's a great growth vehicle. I have said stay away from retail in general, other than Costco and the discounters, the full-time discounters like TJX, and that's all I really want to do, okay? All right, listen, I urge you, don't shoot the messenger. David Tepper didn't steal Christmas from the Bulls. Sometimes bad news is just bad news, and hot data is too hot data. Oh, man, buddy, tonight, Paychex has its finger on the pulse of small business, so where do we stand with the recession fears looming? They've got some great comments on it, so I'm going to talk to the CEO. And egg prices, I know, you know, they've surged on the heels of a bird flu breakout impacting millions of chickens and turkeys. I'm learning more about what we're doing to fight the disease and why prices are going up with the head of Zoetis. And Smuckers recently held its investor day, highlighting a host of impressive metrics going into the new year. I'm breaking down the headlines for the company's top brass with a stock that hit its 52-week high today. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.